Okay, hello everybody. I'm Susan Edwards and uh, many of you I've been communicating with. I am co-founder of EMA with Bruce and welcome to our first Hot Topics in Mediation, the first of the series. We're excited about this. Um, I'm sorry, I keep clicking because people are going into the waiting room. Um, so I'm going to be hosting this event. I'm going to turn it over to Boris, who is our technical person, and he can talk about the technical issues. And then afterwards, Galena and Louisa will be interviewing Bruce. So um, what I will do, I'll turn it over to Boris now, and then we'll talk at the end about the recording and where we can, where you can find it afterwards. So Boris. Dobry den, shanom yuchasnaki. Вітаємо вас на заході. Хочу трохи розповісти про функціонал перекладу з англійської на українську мову та з української на англійську. Ми сьогодні організовано синхронний переклад на нашому закладі. Для того, щоб почути переклад на українську мову, вам потрібно вімкнути переклад, натиснути на значок глобуса внизу екрану, ліворуч від, від кнопки вийти. Якщо ви берете участь з мобільного телефону, то потрібно натисніть на три крапки, і тоді з'явиться переклад, глобус перекладом. Якщо ви хочете слухати переклад на українську мову, натисніть українська, там буде написано, і натисніть готово, якщо є така у вас опція. Якщо те ж саме, але ви хочете на англійську мову слухати, будь ласка, так само виберіть, нажміть на значок глобуса та виберіть англійську мову, і ви будете чути англійську мову. Дуже дякую. А, Борис, я хочу перепитати, чи всі зрозуміли, де треба тиснути? А, у кого не буде виходити, будь ласка, в чат напишіть і ну, вам покажуть, допомога буде. Це нижня панелька, там може бути або глобус, або може не написано бути українська або англійська. Просто туди тиснете і воно йде, переключається з однієї мови на іншу. А, окей. А, а, Тобто сьогодні дві робочі мови у нас – англійська і українська, тобто, тому що ми вирішили, що е, сьогодні у нас не е, урок англійської мови, а сьогодні ми повинні взяти максимум цінності з цього заходу, тому що сказати чесно, а те, що Брюс е, погодився сьогодні брати участь у нашому заході – це дуже-дуже велика удача. А, Брюс, я навіть чомусь подумала зараз, скільки коштує година вашого часу, але не будемо з цього починати. Можливо, на потім задамо це питання. Да? Тому що дійсно те, що робить Сюзан Едвардс і Брюс Едвардс, ви бачите, що у них спільне прізвище. Тобто це родинна справа не просто за, 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 за зробити цю академію, що у нас є, Едвардс Медіейшн Академі, а але допомагати те, що вони роблять, це просто грандіозно. І, власне, я хочу представити сама, з ким ми ще не знайомі. Мене звуть Галина Єрьоменко, я керівник Українського центру медіації. Я є випускником програми FIF Fellowship Program. Тобто я познайомилася з Сюзан і Едвардсом, і Брюсом під час перебування в Сполучених Штатах Америки. Сьогодні хотіла зробити навіть фотографію, показати, де ми всі разом стоїмо вдома у Сюзан і у Брюса, але вирішила так сьогодні цього не робити. От. Тому у нас є два проекти фактично які а, Сюзан і Брюс а, погодились робити. І це, ну, я не знаю, як можна оцінити той вклад, який вони роблять насправді. А, два проекти. Один проект це Edwards Mediation Academy відкрила двері свого закладу для українців, які бажають познайомитися ближче з медіацією. Тобто програма, яка була комерційним проектом в Україні, вона зараз на певний період часу вона відкрита як доступний безпосередньо Ну, його не хочеться сказати безкоштовний, програма, яку ви можете собі дозволити і не платити за неї. Тому якщо ви ще не там, то можна доєднатися і отримувати ну, цю прекрасну програму. 
якщо треба, то ми дамо посилання дещо і як. І, власне, в рамках цього проєкту з'явилася нова ініціатива, яку ми робимо разом з нашими партнерами. Луїза Романадзе, Українська академія медіації, проєкт «Консент» при підтримці проєкту Європейської ради. І з'явилася ідея зробити зустрічі з гуру медіації. В рамках цих зустрічей планується десь шість зустрічей зробити, і, власне, Брюс відкриває сьогоднішній цикл. Ще раз хочу сказати, що це для нас дуже почесно, тому що я розумію, що це дійсно такий дуже великий подарунок нам всім. Я не хочу більше бути на сцені, тому що ті, хто зі мною більш знайомий, ви знаєте, що мене дуже важко потім прибрати зі сцени. Тому я хочу зараз надати можливість Брюсу більше говорити і Сюзан більше говорити. Єдине, що хочу сказати, що якщо думати, кому було важче починати робити медіації, то як нам не хочеться казати, як нам важко, але я все-таки скажу, що Брюс починав ті часи, коли про медіацію в Сполучених Штатах, я думаю, мало хто знав. Його особиста історія, як він прийшов до медіації, як він приймав рішення стати медіатором, як реагувало оточення, що його надихало. Я думаю, що вся ця інформація, особистий досвід Брюса, він може надихнути нас також і сказати, що що б ми не робили, якщо ми щось робимо, то наші дії завжди приведуть до успіху. Я, до речі, Сюзан запитувала, коли вони зустрілись, коли же Брюс був медіатором, чи ще не був медіатором, це також дуже цікаво, тому що це просто сунки, але зараз не про це. Пропоную Брюсу запропонувати слово, щоб він вже починав говорити. І хочу, а да, і ще один, давайте домовимось про правила технічні, як ми будемо сьогодні задавати питання, тому що питання заохочується, це не наш з Луїзою захід, це ваш захід насправді, і ми тільки з цього будемо свої бенефіці якісь отримувати, які для нас також важливі. Тому це ваш захід, Брюс сьогодні ваш, якщо Сюзан не заперечує, тобто будь-які запитання, які у вас є, будь ласка, будете задавати Брюсу, але давайте домовимося, щоб ми до цього прийшли йшли наприкінці зустрічі. Добре? Тому ваші запитання давайте будемо писати в чат. У нас є Сюзан, у нас є перекладачі, ми з цим впораємося, і простір для запитань обов'язково буде, і ми до ваших запитань повернемось трошки пізніше. І хочу починати, якщо ви не заперечуєте. Добре? Брюс, ваш час виходити на сцену, запрошуємо. Перше запитання. Я думаю, що це запитання насправді. Так, будь ласка. Брюс хотів щось сказати? Галіна, можна я сказати один word or two to begin? Що, що, що. Я, 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 я. Дякую. Дякую за кінду інтродукцію до обох Сузан і я. Я маю на коректі тільки трохи, коли ви сказали, що це було вирішено мати нас тут сьогодні because Susan and I both feel that the good fortune is ours uh, to be able to work with you, to assist you, and to help you in any way that we can. Um, I thank all of you who have made today possible and the ensuing sessions. We look forward to bringing you as much information, help, and just genuine caring that we can deliver uh, in that process. Um, I apologize in advance for not being able to address you in your native language. Mm -hmm. uh, but the beauty of what we talk about is that conflict uh, transcends language. I don't have to tell you, of all people, conflict transcends cultures, borders, religions, and the like. And so what we have to share is really a universal theme and a universal ability to try and work in a conflict environment. Um, one of my, uh, those of you who have seen any of my teaching know that I'm fond of quotes. There's so many people in this world who can express things better than I. Uh, I um, enjoy reading and listening to how other people describe things. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King in the United States once said, out of a mountain of despair, a stone of hope. And as we begin this process, 
uh, I consider each of you a stone of hope, a stone of hope in your families, a stone of hope in your communities, a stone of hope to your countrymen, and a stone of hope to the rest of the world. So thank you, Galena, and everyone for the opportunity to address you this morning. I'd be delighted to answer questions and engage a dialogue as we begin this learning journey together. Насколько я разумею, в том числе про то, что Брюс может задавать вопросы вам, да? То мы сделаем это тоже на прикинце. А, добре, Брюс. А первое запитання. А скажите, будь ласка, как все начиналось? Як все починалося, який стан тоді медіації був, чи люди знали, що таке медіація, хто ви були на той момент, і як вони реагували на ваші рішення стати медіатором? Well, my story I'm fond of telling, and not out of ego or some sense of great success, but because if I can do it, you can do it. If someone from humble backgrounds can enter an environment with a good idea and not much else, then anything is possible. My story is one of fairly humble beings. I grew up um, uh, with a school teacher mom and an engineer father. Uh, my parents were divorced when I was relatively young. Um, I went to college um, on my own and studied psychology uh, out of interest. Uh, but I always knew I wanted to be a lawyer. And so I viewed psychology as a stepping stone to get to law school. And little did I know at the time that it would have a profound influence on my ultimate career. Um, I began my work as a young lawyer and by many objective standards, I had achieved um, a degree of success I had graduated law school, I had obtained a job in a large San Francisco law firm. I had even made a partnership, uh, which was as far as you could advance within the law firm. Yet I was dissatisfied. And I was dissatisfied because the lessons that I had been taught as a young lawyer, indeed in law school, uh, were lessons on how to resolve conflict that didn't match my understanding of psychology, my human, uh, my understanding of human nature, and indeed my experience in how conflicts are best resolved. And so instead of separating people, sometimes demonizing them for years at a time in litigation, I sought out a process of bringing people into the same room to talk uh, with each other, to sometimes be angry or sad or frustrated or all of those things in the moment but to work through issues together in a way that would be more productive. And you ask how I started. Well, in the early days, there was no such thing as mediation in the commercial environment in which I operated. Like many of you, we had com uh, community mediation. We had family law mediation. Maybe in some areas like labor law, there was mediation, but it was an entirely different model. And I took some of those lessons and tried to build on it. And then uh, after uh, several years of experimenting with this process, made the decision one day to leave the law firm. And I walked away from my partnership. I walked away from my partners. I walked out into the street and down the block to a very small office with another uh, attorney who I had convinced to come with me. And we set up one of the first, if not the first, commercial mediation enterprise run by former attorneys. We left behind our law practices entirely, and we began trying to knock on doors and sell this concept of mediation to law firms and industry and government and anyone who would listen to us. And this was in approximately 1990. And at the time, again, to remind you, I had no professional gravitas. I was not a retired judge. I was not a senior partner in a law firm whose name resounded within the legal community. I had no venture capital backing. I was simply a young lawyer with an idea and a passion to try and make it work. And again, 
those, that's why I share this story with so many people around the world, because I try and inspire people to know that if I can do it, you can do it. And there were many doubters in those early days, I assure you. My parents thought I was crazy for giving up a good law job and moving off into some uncertain future. My partners, interestingly enough, I took the time to go around the law firm and talk with 30 or 40 of my partners to let them know personally and directly what I was doing. And looking back on that experience, what I did not expect was in hearing each of them's response, almost a wistful sense of an adventure not taken, a door not opened in their own lives that they maybe wished they had done at some point as well. And they were all very encouraging in this new adventure of mine. And so different people had different reactions to this. Years later, I was told time and time again by other lawyers in the community I would mediate with, they would say, oh, I remember that newspaper article when you first started this company. And I remember saying to myself, what a great idea. Wow, how bold to step away from the practice of law and pursue that. So don't be held back by other people's thoughts. Don't be held back by uh, concerns about the future. Uh, just go and take your passion and marry it with your sense of, of skills uh, and, and in how, whatever way you can make a difference, seek out to make a difference. That's the message I have for each of you in terms of how I got started in this business. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 Брюс, чи було якась формальна освіта? Я перепрошую. В медіації, в медіації щось було чи I don't have or didn't have at the time much formal education because there was none. This was a new industry we were creating. I couldn't go to a local college and take a course on mediation. I couldn't seek out experienced mediators in the community and ask to learn from them. I had to learn as I went. I had to read what I could read that was available. I had to talk to some mediators. I did take a mediation training from a family law mediator uh, because so many of these skills are transferable. I remember one seminar I went to that was put on by a mediator who mediated prison riots. Think about that for a moment, prison riots. And he would go into prisons when there was this kind of conflict. And I remember years later thinking to myself, if somebody can learn to mediate prison riots, then there's hope for the rest of us in mediating more traditional disputes. But there was very little of information available in those days. Fortunately, I was asked very early in my career to co-teach at the leading institution of dispute resolution in the United States. It's a university called Pepperdine and their ADR uh, Institute is called the Strauss Institute. You, I commend you to look at online. The Strauss Institute and the Harvard program on negotiation have been the top two university programs in the United States for the last 20 years. But I say I was fortunate because I was brought in by the um, founder of the program to help him teach the course on advanced mediation skills. And I told him, I'm not an academic. I don't know anything about teaching per se. I just mediate every day. And he said, that's why I want you. He said, <laughs> together we can combine our knowledge and, and give the students the best possible information. And the students were not law school students. They were aspiring mediators. They were lawyers, they were retired judges, they were religious leaders and political leaders and people who wanted to move into the mediation community. And years later, uh, Susan uh, uh, engaged an educational psychologist, a learning consultant to help us develop a better knowledge of how people learn in an online environment. And lo and behold, uh, I stumbled on something called the learning pyramid, which uh, suggests that students online retain about 5% of what they hear if someone like me is a talking head for an hour or two or three. But there are different ways to learn and through reflective learning 
and uh, lo and behold, the most um, retentive way of learning information is by teaching. And so as a teacher of mediation skills, it forced me to think more deeply about what I was saying, to develop my lessons more carefully, more thoughtfully, and, and in a more structured fashion, all the while overlaying a very uh, practical sense of what I was teaching. And so as we continue this process and you engage in some of the Edwards Mediation Academy materials, my hope is that you come away with a strong sense of practicality, of lessons that you can apply in your daily lives, not just the theory behind what we're talking about. So for me, it's been um, a learning journey. And even though I've taught now for almost 30 years, I've taught in over 20 countries in person, more than that uh, virtually, uh, I still learn every day myself. And that's the wonder of this process of learning to connect with people, learning to resolve conflict. It's a lifelong journey. And I start with that message. Thank you. Liza, я просто знаю, що Edwards Mediation Academy – це сімейний проект. Тобто ви робите разом Сюзан, Брюс, Сюзан, Edwards Mediation Academy. А ми знаємо, що між партнерами іноді бувають суперечки. Can you, can you, mute, the, can you mute the background Ukrainian? Because I'm having a hard time hearing the translation. Ага, добре, добре. Ага. Так. Український на фоні. Yes, better. Thank you. Ага. Так. Едвардс Медіжен Академі – це сімейний партнерський проєкт, я б сказала так. Да? Приватне питання. Чи ви використовуєте навички медіатора в розмові з своїм партнером про розвиток проєкту? Тому що конфлікт він розвиває. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, probably better to ask my wife that question because I think there's times where she would prefer an advocate than a mediator in our family disputes. Um, it is uh, one of the wonderful things of having a partnership with my wife is she learns the common language of dispute resolution and that frankly has gotten so much more sophisticated that I can no longer be an effective mediator in the family. But uh, that's, uh, that's a great question. Добре, дякую дуже. Луиза, будь ласка. Дякую. Вітаю, Брюсе. І вдячна за те, що сьогодні ви ділитесь з нами вашим досвідом. І що ви розказали про те, як ви починали. А зараз, будь ласка, розкажіть нам, що відбувається зараз. Як виглядає медіація зараз у вашому виконанні? Хто такий Брюс Едвард зараз? І що зараз про це, про медіацію, про вас, про ваші ідеї думають люди, які вас оточують? Again, a number of good questions. Let me take them one at a time. In terms of the current environment of mediation, I'll speak uh, about our experience in the United States first. Um, there is a increased um, growth of mediation, what I call uh, the demand side, meaning increasingly common for courts, for consumers of litigation services, such as industries, high tech, insurance companies, um, law firms, all becoming increasingly aware of and sophisticated about the use of mediation. And so there was a article in a law journal about two years ago, December, talking about the vanishing trial in the United States. And the statistic read that in the federal court system, 
cases involving civil litigation, fewer than 1% of the cases filed ended up going to trial. And in large part, they credit that with mandatory mediation in the court system, as well as voluntary mediation by those who are in conflict. Um, similar statistics were given for state courts. Uh, it was less than 5% of civil cases filed uh, ended up in a court, meaning judge or jury trial. So mediation has had a substantial impact in reducing the backlog of cases in our court system, as well as offering a host of other benefits. Um, on what I call the supply side, meaning the profession of mediation, there's been a proliferation of mediators and mediation training in the last two decades. It's very common for those senior lawyers and retired judges who are sometimes forced to leave their current occupations to move into the field of mediation for better and worse. We can talk about that in days or hours ahead. But this idea that there is there are many more mediators out there is very much indicative of the growth of mediation. In my mind, you ask what the sort of mediation uh, looks like. Um, it's, um, well, in the first instance, it's growing and it's growing exponentially. And the, question, the better question is not where it's going because it is going to grow. The better question is what's it gonna look like as it grows? And um, currently, um, mediation in the commercial sense is a little hard to, to generalize because there are so many different mediation companies, so many different avenues for mediation, meaning court annexed mediation versus private commercial mediation. There's so many different mediators, but there are common threads that run through it. One of my goals in the United States, and we'll talk about internationally in a few minutes, is to try and make sure that we stay true to mediation in its purest form. As we move forward in mediation training, you'll hear me talk about principles of mediation, that the attributes of, of mediation and its defining characteristics include the fact that it's an interest-based process, includes the fact that it preserves and encourages the right of self-determination of the parties to participate in making those decisions that impact their lives. And it includes the fact that it honors honest and authentic emotions that are a part of everyday conflict. And it's those sort of characteristics of mediation that I strive to make sure are embedded in mediation training and in the practice of mediation, uh, not just in the United States, but around the world uh, as the uh, mediation process continues to grow. Um, who am I now, uh, you ask? Uh, hopefully I'm a lot smarter and better educated than I was when I started this with just an idea and limited knowledge. That was over 8,000 mediations ago. Uh, so clearly uh, I like to think of myself as a process expertise. But one of the things that's unique and captivating about the professional mediation is that every day you have to start again. Yes, you can build to a large degree on your learning and your experience, your ability to handle difficult moments in mediation, but every day is new. Every day, the people in conflict in the room you enter have but one question. That question isn't how many mediations have you done? That question isn't how experienced are you? That question is, what are you gonna be able to offer me or us today? And you have to remind yourself of that every time you walk into the mediation room. That means you have to prepare as diligently and as thoughtfully for today's case as you do tomorrow and the day after that. It means every day, if you haven't worked with people before, you have to give them the same amount of respect and energy to develop a strong connection, one that's premised on trust and credibility, as you did the day before and the day before that. And there are precious few shortcuts in this profession. And most mediators that get into problems are because they either lose patience, design a process that doesn't allow for all of the things that we know go into making a mediation successful, and otherwise uh, try to take shortcuts. I gave a uh, talk uh, last week, uh, one of our webinars on bias in mediation. 
And in doing my research for that talk, one of the interesting um, studies on implicit bias, I hope we all have an opportunity to talk about implicit bias at some point, but that has to do with the mental shortcuts that our brain engages in as we perceive the environment around us. And to today's conversation, what's important about that discussion was this study found that as people get more fatigued, the longer a process goes on, the more inclined our brains are to process information quickly and without our conscious awareness, meaning we're more inclined to engage stereotypical thinking and not be thoughtful in how we address people. So adding to the list of all the reasons that we wanted to design a process and engage a process that's fair, that's authentic, that gives people an appropriate amount of time to develop uh, the conflict, we can add to that list shortcuts involving our mental acuity do a danger to the parties and the process. Topic for another day, but I'll just tease you with that introduction. Дякую, Брюсе. Галина? Микрофон, у вас вимкнений микрофон, пані Галина. Що я почула? Як ми... Брюс робив медіацію кожного дня. I can hear the English now, yes. Окей, так, зробила. Що я почула від Брюса? Що він робив медіацію кожного дня. Думаю, що зараз також він робить кожного дня. Я не знаю, скільки можна запитати. Це значить, що людина закінчила... Тобто, вона повністю в медіації, повна в медіації. Тобто, успішний медіатор. Питання таке, чи існує якась бізнес-модель того, як Брюс працює в медіації? Тобто медіація як бізнес. Звідки клієнти? Чи є якісь продажі або щось, що допомагає просувати ці продукти? Яка цінова політика, як це формується? Як виглядає продукт? Чи бувають випадки, коли є відмова від кейсів? Багато питань, я знаю, але... Я сподіваюся, що все зрозуміло і зрозуміло, да? Тобто бізнес-модель, що дозволяє бути успішним. І чи є якась специфіка того, що ви щось таке робите, що є успіх комерційний, скажімо так? Бруся Едвардса як медіатора. Вау, це експансив питання. <laughs> um, well, uh, Edwards Mediation Academy has a 30-hour course on developing one's career in mediation, so I will hardly do justice in five minutes to answering that question, but let me try. I'll start from uh, two perspectives, a macro perspective, meaning answering it based on the business and the industry, and then a more micro perspective, answering it based on the individual. The macro perspective, keep in mind, not only were we developing a process 35 years ago, we were developing a business, we were developing a profession. And along with it, we were trying to develop a business structure. And so we were um, every day making uh, decisions, some of which proved to be good decisions, some of which we had to discard along the way as bad decisions in designing a business structure for what is essentially a service business, offering the services of individual professionals. How does one build their time? How does one structure the company? How does one uh, take uh, office space? What type of support staff does one hire in this process? And I've now been involved in starting um, or managing three different country, companies, rather. The most recent, JAMS, is now the largest uh, commercial mediation provider in the United States. We had a owner's meeting a week ago, and I 
learned statistically, we mediated about 18,000 cases within our company last year in our 26 offices around the country. We now have about 450 mediators and arbitrators around those offices. The business structure is that we engage the services of professionals, myself included, as independent contractors, as opposed to employees. And there's some tax reasons and other business reasons why that structure makes the most sense. But um, it really is, it has been a lesson uh, for probably a business school to dissect and discuss how we have managed to pull together uh, successful, sometimes ego-driven professionals uh, under one roof and um, pulling in the same direction of uh, advancing the mediation career. And so from the standpoint of the business model itself and what I call the macro business of mediation, uh, we know that uh, um, it can be successful uh, if leveraged uh, to a large degree. That said, it's still true in the United States that most mediators don't work in the context of a very large organizational structure. Most mediators work in smaller offices with a collection of three or six or 10 mediators, regionally based, not nationally based. Many mediators are independent contractors working by themselves out of their home, and particularly in this day and age where remote platforms like Zoom have offered the opportunity for the industry to work remotely. It's played into the business model of those that want to work independently, remotely, and without office overhead and expense, without much in the way of support staff. So there's a wide variety of business models that have proven successful in the United States. We just happen to have pushed the model as far as we can to date to develop a large corporate structure, a nationally based organization, one that we then can leverage to put our company's name in contracts so that when a dispute does arise, parties are driven contractually to seek us out and attempt mediation in the first instance before they move on to arbitration or litigation. And we have that benefit because of the size and reach and reputation of our company. But that is now we started. When I started, again, to take you back 30 some years ago, when I walked out that uh, day from my law firm and walked down the block, I walked into an office space that was uh, maybe a thousand square meters with three rooms. My sister came in at night and typed up letters because that's what we did in those days as we typed letters. <laughs> and that was how we started. Very modest structure, very modest means. And that's a long way away from today, driving into San Francisco, where we have two floors uh, in one of the largest office buildings in San Francisco, with probably 30 staff members coming in uh, to assist mediations with over 30 conference rooms on those two floors to give you an idea of the physical layout of just one of our offices. Um, so that's the macro. Uh, question. The micro question is intriguing as well. The micro question is, what's involved in developing your career? What's involved in um, developing your reputation? And how do you do that in the context of a larger organization, which is a different discussion point altogether. But in developing your own careers, again, a much longer conversation, but it starts with um, self-reflection. It starts with assessing kind of who you are and how you see your own skill set, your own aptitude, your own passion, and in what direction do those things take you. And then it involves developing a business plan, one that starts with some sort of geographical reach. It starts with some realistic substantive area that uh, you're enthusiastic about, whether it's family law or community mediation, or resolving commu uh, commercial disputes or, or working within an organization to uh, help that company resolve its disputes. We can talk about a myriad of um, mediation related professional opportunities that have begun to evolve in the United States. And when I travel internationally, when I have this conversation with aspiring mediators, I tell people this, 
the majority of mediation related professions that will ultimately evolve have yet to be developed. The majority of those career paths that you might find for yourself have yet to be developed, meaning the world is there for you to take your own career path and explore it. I'm I, I, again, cautious in how I say this because of your current circumstance, but the world is rife with conflict. Our daily lives are rife with conflict. There are innumerable opportunities to find career paths to resolving or helping others resolve conflict. And so as you think about your own personal circumstance, be thoughtful about it, be reflective about it, and then be strategic. Because I, over my career, have received thousands of announcements from people going into mediation. And that history is sort of littered with people's failed efforts. And their efforts have failed largely because they've failed to plan. They failed to be strategic in their thinking. They failed to uh, set realistic short-term and long-term goals, both financially and otherwise, that they can mark their progress along their career path or they have just lacked the courage to sort of step out into a new path entirely and try and forge that path. For example, just to give you a snapshot of things to uh, uh, stimulate your thinking, we in the United States now have lots of these ombuds positions, internal positions within high tech companies, within hospitals, within universities, within large organizations of all types, even within government where people's task is to identify conflict moments, both inward looking conflicts with employees or between departments and outward facing conflicts, meaning between organizations and their customers or their suppliers or others. Um, and those careers are people who are looking to minimize conflict, not eliminate it. Uh, this comes through in our courses. We will never eliminate conflict. It's part of the human condition, you know that. It also has a productive element that conflict can breed better choices, uh, more creativity, uh, more efficiencies, uh, if handled properly. And so uh, it's often said peace isn't the absence of conflict. Peace is conflict hand handled in appropriate ways. And so um, that's um, uh, from the individual or micro perspective, some of my initial thoughts about what each of you would need to do to sort of develop your own careers. But here's a takeaway from this discussion. Your career will advance commensurate with your skill as a mediator. So you'll do lots of things to market yourself. You'll do lots of things to give yourself an opportunity to talk about a career path in mediation with those who are willing to listen. And there are all types of groups we can identify you should be talking to. And you'll do everything you can to perfect your business plan. But the ultimate litmus test to your success or failure will be the skills that you demonstrate when you're in that mediation room, what we call mediation competency. And by demonstrating mediation competency time and again, you'll begin to develop your own name, your own brand, people's sense that you know what you're doing and you're to be sought out next time there's a conflict of any magnitude that requires expert assistance. So spend the time that's necessary developing your skills at the same time you think about developing your career more generally. Louisa, can I add something to that? Or Galena? Um, <laughs> Every probably every week I have conversations with <laughs> students, three or four at a time, three or four a week. And what's interesting for me is now the conversations I have, they're more definitely the majority are not from people that want to go into commercial mediation in the United States. They're from people who are teachers. I speak to school administrators. I speak to religious leaders, police officers, therapists, business managers, all individuals that are using mediation skills or they want to use mediation skills. They wanna further their skills in other areas. So keep that in mind as you're going forward. This is not just about becoming a 
lawyer mediator and doing commercial cases or court cases or family cases. There's so many other opportunities out there. And I would venture to say that in the United States, that's probably where the greatest increase is coming. It's what I call the next generation. And mediation in the last 30 years has been what I describe as a nascent profession, a new beginning, as we've indoctrinated a culture of courts, of lawyers, of law students, ultimately of business leaders, the value of mediation in the context of disputes, including commercial litigation. But to me, that's just the first step. The next step is where do we take these lessons? Because certainly while litigation is the front line in many instances of conflict in many countries, it's not the only front line of conflict. And I don't have to look any further than our own country to point out how divided a country can be, how politicized discussions can get, how fractured families and communities and leaders can be over any number of issues. And so Susan and I are working in different environments. I work with the International Academy of Mediators. I work with the Weinstein International Foundation. I work with others to try and take these lessons to the broadest possible audience. And there may be many in this call who don't see a future in mediating commercial cases, but much prefer the opportunity to jump straight to the penultimate um, lesson, which is how do we bring these lessons to our leadership, to our countries, to our cross-border disputes in a way that minimizes the type of human suffering that your country embodies at this moment. And that's really what gets me going day in and day out around the edges of my daily mediation practice. And when we talk with, uh, uh, I'm about to take off for the Middle East and Africa next month, and the hope is that we meet with certain government leaders, we meet with deans of law schools. Yes, we'll be teaching mediation skills, but whenever possible, whenever we can find the right audience, we're gonna be stepping outside of the lane of commercial mediation and introducing these lessons to those that will listen, those who can benefit their society, their governments, their communities uh, by advancing these lessons. So to me, that's where my passion lies. That's where I'm hoping to take this conversation in the next 10 or 20 years, um, health permitting. Um, and, and, and I think that really is the logical extension of what we're talking about today. So don't lose sight of that as you develop a more short-term plan, if you will. A question was asked earlier, I didn't get to it, and it's somewhat uh, uh, sort of mundane, I don't mean that dismissively, but I'll answer it in any way. Uh, the question was, how does one bill for mediation? The question is, you know, uh, you know can you make it a viable career? Um, one typically uh, bills for mediation either by the hour or by the day, there are some mediators who will attempt to put a price on resolving a dispute generally that might entail multiple days and co-mediation, group efforts to resolve conflict. Those are sort of being explored more creatively. But I think the real caveat, the real um, uh, concern is one cannot have a stake in the economic outcome of a dispute for obvious reasons because your objectivity your neutrality uh, would be compromised. So um, most mediators, most commercial mediators charge by the hour or charge by the day. Yes, commercial mediation uh, can be a self-sustaining profession, uh, just as other professions, be they law or medicine or professional engineering. Um, it's just a question of finding the right niche and developing a client base and uh, pursuing um, uh, your profession with skill uh, and acumen. Um, there are lots of questions that we've had to address business-wise over the years. What happens if a dispute resolves before it comes to your table, but after you've set a case for mediation? What happens if um, the parties decide uh, the day before mediation that uh, somebody can't or show up who's important to the discussion and how do you assess um, uh, penalties or cancellation fees 
Um, should there be administrative fees on top of the mediator's charge so that you can provide class one office space for the dispute to be heard where people can bring in lunches and other food for the day and other amenities to make people uh, comfortable. Those are all practical day-to-day -day business considerations that we can help talk about you know, going forward. Uh, but they're things we've had to address certainly over the decades to try and develop the highest quality of service and comfort for those people who are coming into a mediation environment um, with a certain degree of emotion, anxiety, and concern about what that process is going to look like. So I'll pause there, address other questions. Я мала на увазі, чи були випадки, коли Брюс відмовлявся від медіації. Оце цікаво. А, тобто не захотів робити, ну, з якихось причин відмовився робити медіацію. Чи бувало таке? It's a great question. Um... I have refused to take cases only in rare situations um, that might include if someone has been a lawyer, particularly coming back to mediation, has historically been untruthful or abusive to me or others in the mediation process, I might refuse to work with him or her again. Um, in terms of the substance of mediation, I have mediated cases involving abuse by priests, sexual abuse of gymnastics students, um, some of the most horrific kinds of personal injury and wrongful death types of circumstances, um, abusive as employment environments, and um, I have not refused any of those opportunities, um, although they're difficult to um, work within. Um, cases involving the death of children are particularly troublesome to me as a parent, but I feel that I can bring a degree of expertise and assistance to the parties to help them work through a most difficult circumstance. And so I'm hesitant to refuse accepting a case simply because it's traumatic, it's challenging, or otherwise uh, uh, presents problems. Дякую, Брюс. Зараз я Луїзі передам слово. Луїза, перепрошую дуже, да? Просто хочу сказати, звернутися до того, що Сюзан каже, і Брюс каже, що медіаційна навичка стає навичкою життя. А у нас є проект німецький Мюнхенська академія Мюнхенська торгово-промислової палати. І, і я в групі зараз запитала в німецьких медіаторів, скільки там було юристів, тільки один юрист. І 16 людей, один юрист. Всі інші, вони навчалися саме для застосування цих навичок в професійній діяльності. Тобто це не про чисту діяльність медіатора. Тому Сюзан і Брюс, я розумію, про що це. Де люди хочуть для, для життя вже ці навички розвивати, для професійної діяльності. Це навичка майбутнього або в теперішнього часу вже дійсно. Будь ласка, Луїза. Дякую, Галина. Дякую, Брюс. Насправді... Те, чим ви тут з нами сьогодні ділитесь, воно знаходить дуже так багато відгуку всередині. І стосовно того, що не всі готові зрозуміти нас і наше бажання зараз розвивати медіацію в Україні. І те, що ми віримо в те, що ми робимо. Тому ваш приклад, приклад того, що успіх, він приходить, для цього, звісно, потрібно докладати послідовно зусиль, він дуже надихаючим для нас є. І про те, що Багато хто з нас з одного боку готовий відмовитися від юридичної практики на користь медіації, тому що це більш екологічно. І в контексті того, що багато хто проходить медіацію просто, щоб здобути ці навички, тому що використовують їх в подальшому в основній професії. У нас так само є багато різних прикладів, коли на навчання приходили і е, лікарі, 
і навіть е, в нас був капітан дальнього плавання, коли ну, дійсно потрібно володіти навичками комунікації для того, щоб можна було спілкуватися. Тому, е, оскільки і в мене є багато відгуку, я так розумію, в інших учасників теж саме, тому я, мабуть, зараз запропоную, щоб учасники задавали, ставили свої запитання до вас, тому що е, ну, багато всього виникає, якихось хочеться щось уточнити, щось кудись заблибити, кудись піти. Тому, будь ласка, якщо є запитання, е, са, саме, саме можливість скористатися зараз. Є відгук, thank you, Брюс, for your generosity. So, thank you. Добре. Чи є запитання? Давайте вже от тоді, да? будь ласка, Олег. А, а, дивіться, я, я дивлюся на час, да, ми домовлялися година і 30 хвилин. Прошу лаконічні тоді запитання, да, тобто пробуємо робити це. Дякую дуже. Дякую. Алина, підкажіть, будь ласка, українською, англійською як краще буде? Давайте українською, не знаю, щоб всі розуміли. Угу. Брюс, дякую вам за таку надихаючу зустріч. Я почув від вас про те, що ви прийняли рішення залишити кар'єру, кар'єру юриста, кар'єру юриста і піти в абсолютно нову сферу, в медіацію. Скажіть, будь ласка, де ви черпали натхнення для цього сміливого року? Страшно було, Брюс, чи не було? I would be misleading you to suggest I wasn't fearful. Um, one doesn't leave the stability of a good job and career and walk out into the daylight Uh, to develop a new profession without a healthy sense of fear and anxiety. But that can be motivating too, obviously. <clears throat> um, it is, um, um, I liken my experience to being a trapeze artist in the circus, flying the uh, high uh, trapeze where one needs to flying through the air let go of one ring before reaching for the next. And there's that moment when you're in the air where all you have is some degree of momentum that you've created and some degree of trust that the other ring will be there for you when you arrive. <clears throat> and it's those kinds of moments that you know you have to go through. You have to get through those moments somehow and to prepare yourself for them. I found what was helpful When I did this first mediation business, I had a partner and John Bates and John and, and I years later talked about how productive and helpful it was to have each other in those early days, because one of us would come back crestfallen. A law firm would have shut their door in our face saying they had no need for mediation. They were litigators. Get on your way. And yet I would come back to the office and there would be John saying, I just got off a three hour phone call with a reporter for the largest newspaper in Northern California. And this Sunday's business section is going to contain a spread on our new business in this new industry. And he couldn't have been more enthusiastic. And it was that kind of shared enthusiasm that got us through the difficult times. So know that they're there know that uh, you know uh, sort of fear isn't isn't sort of the, the 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 sort of the absence of things it's the ability to sort of keep moving forward thank you bruce so it was a mixture of uh, adrenaline and hope and mm -hmm. uh another sound that you have a really reliable partner indeed indeed sometimes thank you very uh, much sometimes uh, that's a great way to describe it passion and hope and developing momentum to get you through those difficult times and uh, you know and, and setting realistic goals to measure your progress because sometimes looking at things moment to moment or day to day doesn't reveal the appropriate degree of progress 
But if you look at where you were last month or six months ago or a year ago, it's helpful to sort of have that uh, vantage point. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Можно, uh, можно порівнювати з колегами юристами, які вже заробляють, а ви все ще тільки бізнес будуєте. Ну, там багато всього може бути. А, добре, дякую. Оля, будь ласка. Блюс, Юзан, дякую за цю зустріч, надзвичайно цікаву. В мене таке запитання. Я вражена кількістю медіаторів, з якими ви співпрацюєте. Да, була названа цифра 10 тисяч, да, 18 тисяч медіацій. В Україні зараз медіація дуже розвивається, і нас всіх турбує питання якості послуги. Як ви долаєте цей виклик? Така велик, велика кількість медіаторів, велика кількість медіацій. Як ви це ну, контролюєте, якщо можна так сказати? Як ви опікуєтесь якістю? І хто може стати медіатором вашої академії? Чи обов'язково саме той, хто пройшов вашу школу? Да? Чи є якісь додаткові вимоги до них? Ну, це дуже цікаво. Дякую наразі за можливість задати запитання і за відповідь. Wow, great question. Great, great questions. Um, first of all, there needs to be an emphasis on high quality mediation training. The trajectory of the profession, the career path will be determined by the quality of service that mediators provide. And so there is a danger. Uh, there's a number of dangers along the way. Unfortunately, many mediation trainings are given by people who have limited or in some instances no actual mediation experience. Trainings are theoretical, trainings are well intended, but trainings aren't based on a foundation of real experience. So that's one thing to sort of guard against. Training itself, this idea of, you know, do we need a 40 hour course? Do we need a 40 hour course followed by 100 hours of, uh, of experience before we're certified? Again, that's a completely different day's topic and conversation. If I were king for the day and could develop mediation training standards, I would have annual training requirements. I would have just like one who goes into the therapeutic sciences to be a therapist, some several hundred hour requirement for shadowing a trained mediator to be able to see how the profession is uh, administered professionally. Uh, and, I, and I would make sure people know that mediation training is a lifelong experience. And so my bias, if you will, is in favor of training because it does, it is the single most important thing to advance the profession. If people have a positive experience in mediation, they'll come back to the process. This goes back to a teaching tool that I use in one of my courses called the satisfaction triangle. It's a way of just looking at and thinking about one's experience in mediation. Like any triangle, it has three equal sides. One measures people's psychological satisfaction. One side measures people's process satisfaction. Are they engaging in a process that's fair and, and equitable? And the other side is outcome satisfaction. Did they achieve a result that met their needs and interests? What studies have shown is that if any two of those three sides of the satisfaction triangle are met, people will come back. That means that two of the sides, psychological satisfaction and process satisfaction, we as mediators have control over. We can help administer a fair process. We can attend to people's needs individually. What we can't guarantee is a potential outcome. But knowing that, it takes some pressure off us so we don't have to be driven exclusively by trying to get a deal done. And we can be process oriented and people oriented in ways that bring people back to the mediation table. Look, one of the challenges, and I describe my life as uh, the ancient Greek story of Sisyphus rolling the stone up the hill only to have it come down and needing to be rolled uphill yet again. And my Sisyphean task is to try and convince uh, newer mediators in the United States that mediation isn't just about getting a deal done. It's not just about um, distributive bargaining towards some middle ground so that we can reach a number of that makes people go away with a deal consummated. 
and the box can be checked. It's so much broader than that. And that's why we spend so many hours a week, Susan and I and others at the Edwards Mediation Academy, teaching not just in the United States, but around the world. And frankly, it's one of the things that motivates my international teaching because we have a unique opportunity to help for those developing a culture of mediation in their countries to fully appreciate what the potential of mediation looks like when it's used appropriately, when it's defined appropriately, when it's administered appropriately, and not just um, a, a rapid expansion of a segment of the industry that's used to get a deal done and therefore confuses or conflates the term mediation with something that it was never really intended to be, if that makes sense. Брюс, я хочу дуже всім надати слово, але, але як процедурний маршал, егоїстичний дуже. А медіатори, які працюють у вашій організації, я думаю, що Ольга про це запитувала. Як ви контролюєте якість їхніх медіацій? Да, Оля, це про це було? В тому числі, але ну, Брюс відповів велику частину питання. Доста, достатньо, достатньо цього, да? Добре, mm. дякую дуже. Тоді у нас Ірина. Ірина, будь ласка, ваше запитання. Добрий день. В першу чергу, дякую за ваш досвід, за те, що розповіли, дуже цінно. А питання таке, в яких випадках, враховуючи ваш досвід, немає сенсу, коли медіація не працює, коли немає сенсу використовувати цей інструмент? Um, thank you for the good question. Um, mediation will not work in very select instances, but those instances are few and far between. <clears throat> there are certain situations where the disputants need a legal determination, maybe a written judicial decision, to guide them in the future. It's why we have judges, obviously. It's why we have courts of appeal. And so I tell lawyers, mediation is not here to supplant their role as lawyers. There are those times where people's legal rights need to be ultimately determined. But the vast majority of times, there is value in the mediation process. And that includes cases that don't settle in the first instance. If you were to look at my home office, you might see 50 different ongoing cases laid out in a room. Uh, and those are disputes that I've begun in a mediation process for a single day that wasn't successful that day. But the parties value the process enough that they've developed with me a game plan for moving discussions forward. And we will revisit those discussions after certain things have happened. And we'll continue that process until we successfully resolve the matter through mediation, or we simply throw up our hands and say, it needs to be put to a judge or jury. But um, to give you an idea, I, I'm not big on touting success rates and statistics because bringing people together adding value in restoring relationships. There's so many um, way stations along the path where we can mark progress that it's not an all or nothing question. But if the question is, how many times do you end up resolving a dispute in some fashion so that it doesn't continue on in litigation? The answer is the vast majority of the time, more than 90%, clearly. And um, that speaks to the value of the process. And certainly the mediator's skill is not to be overlooked, as I've said, but it's the process, it's the process, it's the process. And skillfully administered, more often than not, that process will enable people to get where they need to be. And sometimes the best thing I can do is just get the hell out of the way. Thank you, Biros. Great. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. А пані Канюль Гасанова, у вас запитання. Так, дякую вам, пані Галино. Можна я англійською одразу, щоб зекономити час? Я просто хочу розпитати про 
цей психологічний аспект. Можна так англійською одразу? Yep. Okay. Uh, Bruce, uh, thank you very much for your lecture. It's a great honor to be here today. So I came across a lot of mediations and every time even in commercial mediation, I see that there are uh, some emotional aspects, especially when we are talking about the internal interest of the parties. And my question is connected with that. How is it important to be a psychologist in mediation? Because for all the um, uh, legal advisors, it's mediation is just about asking right questions in right time. So, uh, and getting uh, answers and working with them. But they omit some emotional aspects that uh, destroys relations in the future. So how it is important to be a psychologist in mediation and what percentage of uh, psychological knowledge should be uh, in every mediator? Thank you. Wow, thank you. Um, it's one of my favorite topics. I hope we have a chance to drill down on it in more detail in weeks ahead. First, one does not have to be a trained psychologist. So let's, everybody can take a deep sigh of relief in that regard. Uh, but one does have to be a student of human emotions. One does have to be a student of, to some degree, neurobiology, how emotions and psychology influences our perception of, uh, of uh, our environment, how it influences our communication with others. I will give you a, a small, um, if, uh, tease, if you will, to a later conversation. But one of the biggest developments, I think, in the field of mediation in the last 30 years has been both a deeper appreciation of the role emotions play in conflict and an ability to sort of address those directly, as well as the neurobiological underpinnings of emotions themselves. For example, we know that there is not a cognitive thought without an emotional component. If I asked you to think back to your earliest childhood experiences, as far back as you can remember, chances are you're gonna remember something cognitively that has a strong emotional attachment. And that's just, a, it may be a birthday party, it may be the death of a loved one, it may be moving away from friends, whatever it is, it has a strong emotional attachment. And we know emotions, help us code memories as an example. But um, as we kind of have moved forward in the field of mediation, we realize that emotions are such an ingrained part of our humanness that frankly, when I started defining mediation 30 years ago, I didn't have the emotional component as a defining feature. But over the years, it became clear to me that how we work with um, respect uh, authentic displays of emotion in conflict is so central to the mediation process. It had to be a, a defining characteristic. And so, um, yeah, uh, you don't have to be a psychologist, but we know that uh, last week when I gave my talk on biases, there are sort of cognitive biases, there are emotional biases uh, that we all have ingrained in how our minds work, how our brains process information. And it's those uh, biases of the heart, if you will, that as mediators, we need to be aware of and in tune with. And so it's not so much being a psychologist, but it is about being a student of communication, of relationships, of interactions that transcend uh, the sort of factual and sometimes legal issues that uh, uh, prevail in disputes. And it's what makes us uh, unique in our ability to deliver uh, assistance to parties in conflict. Anybody can take someone's stated position, reframe it, and explain it down the hall to some willing or, or unwilling audience. But it takes a trained mediator to ask the right questions, as someone was just asking, um, uh, the, the appropriate timing of those questions, the type of question, the, re the respect for the underlying interests and emotions, and to sort of work all of those things simultaneously. Therein lies the skill of the mediator. Uh, thank you very much for such a brilliant answer. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. 
Дякую. А, Брюс, а, питання таке. Я знаю, що зараз в світі дуже поширюється тема обов'язкової медіації, mandatory mediation. А, ваше ставлення? Тому що це може бути кроком в розвитку культури медіації, коли люди ще не знають її цінність. Як, як ви більш схильні, що це добре чи це зло? Якщо так можна запитати. Um, I think in many countries that Susan and I have the privilege of working with, what we describe as a top-down push toward mediation can be essential in helping develop a culture of mediation. The idea that the government, or particularly the courts, would require a process in some degree may be the fastest way to advance people's understanding and experience with a relatively new process. And so I do not overlook for a moment the importance of top-down uh, or mandatory mediation as a way of advancing the culture. I say it somewhat guardedly because in the United States, to add to the picture of what mediation looked like when I left my law firm, there was no mediation. My, in the commercial sense, my initial business plan suggested that it might take our courts 10 years to wake up to the benefits of mediation in the court system. In reality, it only took them about five or six years to follow along. But in the early days, we were building the culture of mediation, sort of one audience member at a time. We were developing it from the bottom up, if you will. We were selling mediation to law firms, to in consumers of litigation services like insurance companies and corporations. We did not have the benefit of a mandatory mediation law or a governmental policy favoring mediation in all sectors of society as some countries do. And we certainly didn't have the advantage that we have now of every court requiring parties to go to mediation before they will get assigned scarce source court resources like a trial date. So um, I think we have to be careful because one of the defining features of mediation, as I've said already, is that it promotes and preserves the right of self-determination, the right that any individual in conflict should possess to control their own destiny and be in charge of decisions that may impact the rest of their life and not to have someone tell them what they should do because they think they know better or best. And so I blanch a little at the idea of mandatory mediation because I think it's a value to the extent it gets people into the process. But at that point, the word mandatory should be checked at the door. Зрозуміло, дякую. А ще є запитання? Дуже цікаво дискусію було б зробити, але у нас просто немає можливості, тому що тут різні аспекти є. А, так, хто хоче запитати ще? Тут а, Брюса і Сюзан дуже дякую. I'm having a hard time hearing the translation. It's very soft. The translation is very soft. Mm -hmm. Better. Okay. Yes, right there. Yeah. Much yeah. better. Thank you. Yeah. Я хотіла сказати, що в чаті дякують Сюзан і Брюсу за підтримку. Всі проекти, які для України проводяться, дуже велике дякую. Сюзан в чаті може почитати це. Давайте останнє запитання. Каню, ви хотіли? Каню, дякую. Дякую, я маю другий питання. Of course, I know what is mediation and facilitation and conciliation, but I would like to hear if it's possible now um, the line between conciliation and mediation, because I also uh, came across with such situations that it is um, so people do not know the difference between them and they di could not differ them. So if it's possible. I want to be cautious in answering this question because we have never had a process called conciliation in the United States. So I never had to distinguish mediation from conciliation. Yet, as we teach in different countries like India or Brazil, where they've historically had a process of conciliation, I've come to learn more about it. Interestingly, as the culture of mediation advances in those countries, 
it tends to replace or supplant conciliation generally. So to some degree, conciliation involved a bit more of a aggressive intervention by the third party or neutral, uh, as I understand it. Um, but it is an important distinguish to make because to the extent people have an experience with a prior process, it's essential to distinguish the new process. In the early days of advancing mediation in the United States, um, I found as I traveled to different parts of our country, there were some many people who confused mediation with arbitration, for example, mm -hmm. and became a very important first step in selling the new profession to be clear on what the process looked like, what was involved, what the characteristics were, and particularly to distinguish it from those things that people might otherwise already know, because that was the clearest way to try and define the process, almost by saying it, what it isn't. It isn't arbitration. It isn't conciliation. Here's why. Here are the benefits to mediation in contrast to those other processes. But I apologize. It's an area that I'm not as... Um, educated about because it's not a process that we have ever had in the United States conciliation. Okay, thank you very much. Дуже дякую за відповідь, Брюса. А питання в чаті, чи Брюс практикує медіація плюс арбітраж? Медарб. Um, the short answer is, when I cannot avoid it, I will arbitrate. And so uh, many mediators don't arbitrate because it is a different skill set. About 70% of my partners within the organizational structure I work are retired judges. So they have some skills in that direction. So I'm fond of pushing cases toward retired judges when arbitration is required. But I will arbitrate once or twice a year, usually just enough to remind myself why mediation is to be preferred and uh, otherwise. Uh, but I am a full-time ADR professional. And that means that there are different kinds of processes that I will engage in. Uh, I, I won't go in to distinguish them all at the moment, but being a special master, you know, being a discovery referee, um, but 90% of my work is as a mediator. And I think what's important here is there are some mediators in the United States who work as part-time mediators. They keep their day job as a lawyer or other professional, but offer their services as a mediator when someone will listen and avail themselves of their services. And I think that... Um, um, for most people in conflict, particularly significant conflicts, they're looking for an experienced professional. I describe it this way. I say, when I go into a airplane to uh, uh, fly to uh, the Middle East, as I'm going to do next week, I don't want to hear the pilot come on and say, welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm a practicing lawyer, but today I'm, I've learned a bit about flying a plane and I'm going to be happy to take you to uh, Dubai. I want somebody that says, you know, I used to be in the Air Force and this is my 40th year flying for Emirates. And, uh, you know, I just want you to know you're in good hands. I think people respond well to that when they're looking for a professional, whether it's a pilot or a surgeon or it's a mediator, somebody that has enough experience to be able to address the difficult moments presented moment to moment in a fluid process like mediation. And so as soon as one is economically able and I realize that is an ultimate litmus test, but as soon as one is economically able, the sooner you can devote your practice exclusively to resolving disputes, the better your reputation, the better your experience, the better overall, um, just in terms of how you approach uh, dispute resolution generally. Дякую, Брюс. Я дивлюся, що дуже мало часу залишається. Ну, по-перше, дуже багато подяк в чаті за дуже хороший курс. Тобто люди навчаються, подобається. І за те, що є можливість сьогодні прийти і виступати. Дуже багато хто казав, що дуже цінна інформація йде. Дякую вам дуже. Якщо можна за одну хвилину, будь ласка, 
а улюблений кейс або кейс, який я буду пам'ятати все життя. Uh, wow, so many there. Um, one year, ages ago, I traveled across the country to mediate a horrific burn injury case. A man who in his job had literally opened the wrong door uh, within his warehouse and was met with a wall of flames that burned him to such a degree that he had over 200 surgeries to address his scarring. And the mediation was held at a hotel conference center. And um, there were maybe 50 people involved. And I remember creating this opportunity for everyone to see this man. And as lawyers wheeled him into this conference center, uh, you could hear a pin drop. It was so quiet as this man who was scarred over 70% of his body was wheeled to the front of the room and I began to ask him questions about his ordeal. And uh, I asked him what was the hardest part of everything he had gone through the last several years of repetitive hospitalization and surgery. And he looked at me and he said, Mr. Edwards, he said, the hardest thing is that nobody touches me anymore. And I never forgot that moment. And years later, uh, I just had the urge, I called up his lawyer and I said, I don't know if you remember me, but I was the mediator who helped your client resolve that horrible life circumstance 10 years ago when I came out to uh, the East Coast. And he said, no, I remember you. My client has fond memories of what's happened. And I asked the lawyer, I said, well, how's your client doing? He said, you know, Bruce, he's doing really well. He's living on a farm that he bought. He bought farm equipment that is tailored to his physical disabilities, but he can be independent. He even has a girlfriend now who's living with him as he's a farmer of vegetables for local restaurants. And life is as good as he can make it, in part thanks to that mediation process. And so it just reminded me that story that no matter sort of how dark the moment, how much sort of despair is seemingly in front of one, you know, there's always, uh, there's always a silver lining that one can come to if you look hard enough and you sort of believe. And mediation is a process that allows for those people to sort of have hope. And I'll tell that story from time to time for people who are in the darkness of the moment, because it really does, I think, shine a light on the value of mediation. Я дуже вдячна, Луїза. Я думаю, що від себе від себе, від вас я можу сказати, що це дуже таке символічне і дуже хороше закінчення сьогоднішньої зустрічі. А... Є ще питання щодо етики. Я не знаю, чи у нас є час. Насправді домовленість була на півтори години. Я розумію, що всі питання не задані. У мене у самої дуже багато запитань. От. Я себе так стримувала, щоб не взяти. Да. Тому я думаю, у нас буде ще багато інших зустрічей. Прибережіть свої запитання для інших медіаторів. А, а ще коли буде такий прямий ефір, не знаю, тому що ми домовлялися дуже-дуже дуже, дуже, нас... заздалі. А, Галіна, не... у нас квітні наступний захід, тобто кожного... А. Кожні два місяці буде наступний захід. Я, я мало на увазі, що з Брюсом, я не знаю, коли можна ще. От, а взагалі наступний будуть, ми з, Сюзан зробила все для того, щоб прийшли найкращі. Сюзан, дуже дякую, тому що роль Сюзан просто неоцінена. Те, що вона на себе взяла, це просто, я не знаю, це, це просто героїзм. А, тому о, слідкуйте за новинами. А, наступна о, подія у нас у квітні. А, Луїза, ми знаємо, про що там буде? Про травму, здається, да? Чи... а, ні, наступна в нас не буде. Да, да, да. С... Коротше, ми гарантуємо, що... Ми будемо... Супер... Так, да, вважайте, вважайте, що це інтрига, да? прийдуть на краще. Тому слідкуйте, буде інформація на проєкті «Консент», буде інформація на Українському центрі медіації. Сюзан, Брюс, дуже багато в чаті і в особистих повідомленнях. Дуже велике подяка.
за сьогодні, і я думаю, що це також до питання натхнення, що надихає. Да? Тому, а ви кинули зернятко, а воно виросте у багатьох людей, а в їхніх судьбах, в їхніх долях, в їхніх бізнесах, а в їхніх сподіваннях, бажанні жити і боротися. Тому дуже-дуже дякуємо вам. І ми хочемо вам побажати дуже великого особистого щастя, щоб у вас завжди був ресурс на все те, що ви робите. А, і щоб щастя завжди було з нами. Якщо у нас є багато, ми щасливі, то всі інші також щасливі. І дякуємо всім, хто підтримує нас і вас. І я думаю, що це не остання зустріч наша. Добре, дуже дякую. І ще, і, і ще дякуємо нашим перекладачам, які дозволили сьогодні... Um, Проти, ну, зробили це доступним в незалежності від володіння англійською мовою для всіх українців. Дякую дуже. дуже. Дя... Дякую. А, Брюс, а, Сюзан, ви хочете щось сказати на останок? Щоб завершити. Брюс, you go ahead and I'll go after you. I will need, I will say one thing. Look, I, I, it has been a joy to spend some time with you, and most certainly we will create as many opportunities as you desire to share our learning and to support your learning journey along the way. I apologize for needing to sign off momentarily, but as Susan said earlier, I've got a mediation that is beginning as we speak. I'll leave you with this thought. I, I grew up about 10 miles away from Silicon Valley. And at the time I was a child, Steve Jobs, who was the founder of Apple Computer, was tinkering in his garage with uh, devices that would later become known as a computer. And uh, one of Steve Jobs' quotes that is a favorite of mine is, he says, we're here to put a dent in the universe. Otherwise, why even be here? And I challenge you all as you continue your thinking and studying and learning and conversations with each other to figure out the best way for you to make your own dent in the universe. And Susan and I are here to support that journey as best we can from afar. But in the meantime, good luck, Godspeed. We'll be here with you every step of the way that we can. Thank you, everybody. We'll talk again. Thank you. And thank you everyone for attending. As we said in the announcement, um, we've recorded this session. I'll be emailing a link to everybody who's registered. And we will also have the course on your course page. If you're taking the mediation skills course, we'll post it on the project consent page and the UMC and the UAM website as well. Um, so anyway, thank you very much. It's wonderful to put some faces to the names. And as Bruce said, we look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you, Galina, and thank you, Louise and Svetlana as well. Thank you very much for your help. Everybody have a good evening. У мене є прохання маленьке. Давайте всі серця свої пошлемо. Добре? Давайте. Раз, два, три. Паун, та-да-дам.